guys. Um, today we're going to be working on a little wood art project. Not too long ago I made this piece. Um, I colored them using a butane torch so they're actually slightly burnt and like completely burnt to make the colors. I actually really like the way it turned out even if it's a, a little bit crooked. So I want to try and make a slightly more complicated and a little bit bigger piece. Um, the same style but with a different pattern. So this time I'm using a piece of plywood and for the wood last I have are actually cedar shims which I take two and I glue them but I glue them like this so they make flat pieces in the end. They're not perfect, some of them are a bit crooked, uh, some of them are a bit rough, I have sanded them. Um, some of them have really interesting green patterns to them, like these guys. These will actually look really nice with a slightly burnt look because it will really bring out the, uh, the grain in the wood. The idea I have for this piece is here, and it looks like this. I wanted to kind of play with depth to make it kind of look like it was a box or three-dimensional kind of look. So um, the corners, center, are all going to be um, burnt to the darkest black like this. And the uh, shaded part here is going to be with the, um, the last to have the most, uh, like the nicest grain patterns and they're going to be darkened slightly. And I'm going to leave this part here. Uh, natural wood, which I'm just going to uh, finish up with some linseed oil, which is what I did on this piece to really bring out the little grain and detail in this wood. So this one's a bit more complicated and that one turned out a bit crooked. So hopefully <laughs> uh, we'll uh, take what we learned on that one and uh, apply it to this one and hopefully it'll end up straight. To get started, I first make sure that my plywood base is square, and then I trace lines through the middle of either side to find the center. This step is really important and will go a long way in helping to keep the design straight. So to get started, we're going to need to start cutting um, angles to our pieces so they sort of fit we start building up our pattern. For that, I'm going to be using my miter saw. I placed and nailed down the first pieces pretty quickly in the process so that I would have something solid to work around to build out the rest of the design. So what's fun about the shaded pieces, they're going to have a 90 degree edge here where they're um, going to be up against these guys. And then some, only some of them are going to have the 45 degree angle that we're going to have to put here. So we're going to have to clean up the end cut the shop one and these um, these were just shims so they are a little messy looking but uh, one straight cut across there and then we can start figuring out exactly where we're going to place them. I'm a little concerned about this little corner because it's so small there's no way I could put a piece in there unless I I can't nail it in, obviously. Maybe I could glue one or scooch this over a bit and put a larger piece and have this one shaved down. Decisions, decisions. Because the pieces I'm using aren't perfect and the tools I'm using aren't precision instruments and I'm very much a beginner woodworker, and the pieces didn't quite fit together as, as precisely as I would have liked, so there was a lot of compromise in the placement of the pieces. Rather than having one large gap between two pieces in one spot, try to spread out the gaps evenly throughout all the pieces so that they're less noticeable, just smaller gaps and imperfections in the final layout. Hey guys, we're back in the garage again today and we're going to be coloring in our wood pieces that we cut last time uh, using the butane torch. So I'm going to get set up for that and show you how I go about doing it. Okay, 
Welcome to my workshop floor. Uh, so we're going to be working down here today. The floor is made of cement. So uh, we won't be setting anything on fire that we don't want to be setting on fire, hopefully. Uh, so I've got my butane torch here and I have the pieces that I want uh, to darken that are going to go on the art piece. And these ones are going to have a light burn, so I don't want to make them too dark. And just to be sure, I've got a piece here that I'm just going to practice on first to make sure I've got the right, the right technique for what I want to, what I want to do. So first thing we got to do is turn on the torch. That's a bit loud. And that one is out. All right. So full black and lightly darkened. And once this is uh, darkened, I'm going to sand it lightly also. So it's going to kind of diffuse it. And for the extra black parts, we're going to have to seal them with a, with a clear spray paint just so they don't make everything sooty. Okay. I guess we're ready, ready to do these pieces. See how it brings out the grain and the wood? It's pretty cool. I thought you might like to see how it's starting uh, to come together with our darkened pieces. Just to get an idea, always encouraging to see the progress. So I still going to sand these and they're going to look a bit more smooth. So the sanding really softens out the harsh bits and we can even if we've gone too dark in some spots just sand it down a little. So I'm going to finish sanding these and then we can go on to darken the corner pieces to full black. I actually really enjoyed the part where I got to burn my pieces using the butane torch. I did notice that my torch doesn't work very well when it's uh, lying sideways or close to being inverted, so try to keep your torch as upright as possible, otherwise the flame will have a tendency to just go out on you. I lightly sand the blackened pieces as well to get off any loose bits of soot before I seal them with a clear spray paint. So we've successfully darkened all our pieces with the torch and we didn't burn anything that we didn't want to burn and it didn't burn ourselves and the garage is still standing so that's a win. That spray paint is a quick dry spray paint so it takes about 15 minutes for the paint to dry. And of course I can't resist placing the pieces on the, <laughs> on the piece even though they're not totally dry yet just to, to get an idea of how it's going to look. Gluing and placing the pieces in their final positions is a step I really enjoy. I find it very calming and meditative. Planning and making this piece has been a minor miracle for me. I, uh, I'm a person who tends to have a pretty busy mind, but a lot of trouble to bring that uh, to take action steps towards realizing um, the plans I have in my head, I guess. So 
for me to have had the idea to do this, to have planned out all the steps, to have gotten all the materials together and actually followed through uh, with the whole thing to the end um, was amazing. I am super proud of myself and uh, hope to make a lot more. Since I've learned that for me what's really difficult is breaking down a task into all the steps needed to accomplish it, for me the best thing to do is to really sit down and think through the whole project, what I'm going to need, and every single step that's going to be required to finish it. And at this process, I have to be as detailed as possible, and then that really increases my chances of, uh, of getting through it. As much as I enjoy being creative and realizing projects like this, I can often get shut down by the just the overwhelm I feel when I look at the task and just see everything I need to do all in one block makes it seem like a really insurmountable task. So that's why it's so key for me to really break it down and take the time to detail the steps. Next, I cleaned off the whole piece with some compressed air to make sure it was clear of sawdust and ready to be oiled. I used tongue oil to finish this piece, which did a pretty good job of bringing out the grain and making the colors of the wood look much richer. I used the oil on the natural pieces as well as the pieces that were uh, just slightly burnt, uh, being careful not to put any on the blackened pieces, which were already sealed with the clear spray paint. Finally, I measured out the pieces of a jointed pine lath to make my frame, which I just nailed into place with uh, brad nails. So there you have it. I successfully planned, started, and finished a project. Didn't even turn out too badly. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.